So this is the Engway EP2 Pro. This is the big brother of the other Engway that I actually just recently unboxed and reviewed. And that was a really good bike. So I'm really excited about what this bike has to offer. This is a 20 inch fat tire bike. And I'm kind of excited to see uh, what kind of upgrades they have on this. So let's get started. Putting together the Engway EP2 Pro wasn't too difficult. Once I got it out of the box, I put it up on a stand. Then I put in flat out tire sealant in the front tire to make sure I don't get any flats. Then I put the neck and the handlebar assembly together, then put on the front rim onto the bike, aligned everything up, then worked on the back of the bike by adding flat out tire sealant to the back tire as well. Then I got the rack and assembled that to the bike and put on the rear tail light and connected that up. Then I did the front fender and put on the headlight and that was it. Okay, so this is the Engway EP2 Pro. This is a fun bike. It has uh, 20 inch fat tires in the back. So these are four by, 20 by four inch tires, as you can see here, uh, 20 by four inch. And everything that you see on this bike currently at this time, it comes with it except for, the only thing I added on was this water bottle holder. We sell this on the ebikeproducts.com website. It fits any bikes. Because this didn't have a water bottle holder on it, that's the only thing we added. Now this is my GPS remote, so any speeds, that you see running on the screen is taking the GPS signal from this remote directly. So you are actually seeing the speed of this bike on the screen overlay, and it is not the camera bike that you're actually seeing. So that, that's the only two things that's been added on here. So what you see is what you get with this, and it's a fun bike, I gotta start saying. So let me go down through the spikes, so the, the specs on this first. So we're looking at the back here, and it's a 48 volt, 750 watt brushless gear motor, and inside here we have a 48 volt 13 amp hour lithium battery uh, which you know they claim on the website can probably go up to 50 miles plus i would say uh, that's probably an optimal flatline setting maybe somebody who's 140 150 max uh, most i think you'll probably get from this on normal everyday usage is that you're probably going to be looking closer to about 30 miles uh, on you know regular terrain for those of us that are usually a little heavier uh, but uh, there, until the range test is actually done, the website is claiming up to 50 miles. And of course, uh, they do have a disclaimer that says depending on the various conditions. Now, they also do claim it does have a 28 mile an hour top speed. And it is able to hit that. Uh, it does have settings that are a little unique or it's a little different than most that I am used to. And uh, it takes a while to get up to those speeds. There isn't a high level of torque on this bike. So uh, it's not one that's really punchy which in some cases, some people might like. It's a, one of those, because this bike does sit really high, it almost feels as though I'm riding on a 26 inch bike itself. So that's one thing to actually uh, keep in mind as well. Now we do have, actually let me go to the other side of the bike here. We have mechanical disc brakes, and these are 160 millimeter disc rotors. Uh, I'm not familiar with this brand, but the brakes work good and you know, they don't squeak. There was a little brake rub when I first got it and I had to do a little bit of adjustments, which is not uncommon for brand new bikes. Uh, and, but once you adjust it, I like the way that the brakes do work. We also have foldable pedals that come with these. And these are plastic. On the outside, they're nylon, but they work really well. We have a rack here that does come with it. It was in the box, but it wasn't actually installed, so you just install it. This is a cadence sensor bike. That's something to also keep in mind. It does have a slight delay before the actual a motor does kick on when you're starting to do a pedal, maybe about almost a half cycle to a full cycle before it starts to kick on. And you have five different levels of pedal assist and each level as you go up increases the speed by maybe about five or six miles per hour, starting at a really low, like five or six mile an hour speed. It also does have a walk setting, which means that if you hold this down button here, then the bike does kick on and runs, it walks about maybe between four to six miles an hour so that if you are walking the bike, say through campus, you don't have to push it so hard because the motor will help you. As you can see, it does have a cable running into the brake light here. So this is an integrated rear tail light. And that integration does mean that when you do turn on, in fact, let's go ahead and turn that on. So to turn on the bike, you basically have an on button here. You hold this down for a few seconds. And as you can see, it turns on here. So here we have a button here and a button here. Now this top button here, by clicking it, you'll see that we have different functions that it goes across. So this is the max speed setting. I click it again, and then you'll see that it actually moved over to average speed setting. Click it again, and then it'll move over to the trip, and then basic odometer. 
Then we have this bottom button here. You can just click it once and it actually does turn on the headlight. So when that is turned on, then we do have this tail light turned on right now. Push the brake and you'll see that it brightens up. You know, this integration is actually pretty cool because there are some bikes that don't even come with uh, tail lights. They just come with reflectors. And then taking a look at the front, I did actually do a test ride last night as soon as I put it together. And this headlight is pretty bright. This is actually being done or filmed at 11 o'clock in the morning. So it's a bright time of day. And let's talk about the derailleur. We have a turning derailleur here by Shimano. Uh, it's an adequate shifter. So you can shift through the gears pretty easily. It's not the higher end, but it is name brand and it actually does a really good job going through it. It's a seven speed um, cog back here with 14 to 28 tooth range. So the 14 tooth on the high end does mean that you will have to air pedal when you're hitting those uh, higher speeds above probably 22, 23 miles an hour. Uh, with the power that's coming out of this bike anyway, you won't really need to do that much helping it when you're going at that speed. And the front as well is not the biggest chain ring, but it you know does an adequate job there. I don't know the exact size that's, or how many teeth there are. This is kind of a standard type setup for a bike like this. Now, you do have those higher speeds that I did mention. You can go up to 27, 28 miles an hour and you'll see some of the speeds uh, on the overlay here or on some, some of the video that I took earlier today while riding it here. Moving a little further closer, being that you see this here with the latch, we do have a foldable bike. And that's one thing to keep in mind. This is one that you can throw in the back of an SUV. It might be a little large. I mean, if you can see how tall this bike is, you'll notice that it does stay pretty high. I mean, for me at 5'5", to get full pedal extension, I feel as though I'm sitting up really high. So it will be a little larger to fit. It might have to be like an SUV or a truck that you're putting this in, or even, you know, something like a RAV4 or a CRV. Those type of smaller SUVs would actually be okay for this to fit in pretty easily. Uh, we do have front suspension here. I don't know how many millimeters of travel that does come with, um, but we do have that and it does have a lockout, which is good. And on this side, we have our preload adjustments as well. So you can actually make it a little tighter or looser if you want to, or completely lock it out. So that's the other option. Now, the other thing that I really like about this is if you look at the rims, we have like the mag style rims, so they don't have spokes which means there's not gonna be any maintenance that you have to worry about that as well. So that's actually pretty, pretty nice. It actually really does add to a really good look of this bike. Okay, one thing I do wanna point out is that if you are a taller rider, this bike actually would work very well for you because you can actually see how long the seat post comes out to. This is the max height. <laughs> I guess somebody who has some really long legs that that'll fit in, but that's how tall the seat can go into. Now, again, I am 5'5", five five, so for me, I actually do have the seat almost put down to about, about here, and this is where I usually will be riding at. All right, so I wanted to show you an example of how tall this bike really is. For the standover, it's not a big deal. I mean, there's a lot of, there's clearance, you know, and I have a 29 inch inseam, so this is not bad, but if you imagine, if I'm on the seat to get full leg extension, I do have to get up pretty high and I will not or barely be able to reach. But this is how tall I feel comfortable riding and not even full leg extension, just a little less, but it is a t taller bike. So I would say you could still have someone who's shorter by maybe about a five, three, maybe. But for me, pedaling would be really uncomfortable. So I want to kind of show that first. That's one thing about this bike. It is a little taller. So I still have to lean the bike quite a bit when I come to a stop, if I stay on the seat. Now, of course, when I do normally get off the seat, I will come to the part where my, my legs are actually straddling this area here. And you know, it's an adequate fit there. There's a lot of ground clearance from the pedal to the ground. So that does have you elevated a little higher. The frame design is just made that way. People who are might be taller, that this will fit very nicely. Another thing that I would like to mention is this bike came with all the European limitations that are typical of a 15 mile an hour cap. So you'd have to unlock all that through the settings that are here. There is a manual that comes with the bike. It has all the information you need to adjust the settings so that you can get the top speed unlocked up to the 28 miles an hour. It also came so that the throttle was not engaged. 
I, in fact, I thought it was defective and I had to contact customer service and they got back to me really quickly saying, hey, this is how you unlock the throttle and they had instructions and then they also sent me a video on how it was done. And what's really interesting about if you think about that is if you set this bike to go at a max speed of 20 miles an hour, which you can, you can set it so that it won't go over 20 miles an hour, and you turn off the throttle, then you have an official legal class one bike. And this bike would be allowed in a lot more places where only class one bikes are allowed. So that's a cool setting. You can actually show, you know, I, th I guess there's a lot of federal land in the US that you can get a ticket if you have a bike or get kicked out. If you have a bike that's a class two that has a throttle and you could actually show them that the throttle is not engaged because you can turn it off. So it's a real class one. And for me, I'm, you know, I do like to follow the rules a lot. So I would say that I would not ride something where I'm not allowed to. Uh, and this way I could turn it off and say but the throttle is not engaged. It's not part of it. So this seat is a, actually quite a comfortable seat. If, I don't know if you can see how far this goes down, but it has a lot of cushion to it. This one I could keep on there and not have any issues the way that the seat works on this here. If you do notice, we have a key underneath on the back side here. Fenders are included. They do need to be installed when you do get it. So this is like some of the other bikes here. Now I'm going to open this up so that you can see. This is the battery lock, right? And you do have a key here. So like a lot of other bikes in this style, you do need to turn off the bike and that turns off and disengages the battery from, from any power going out of it. But it also you can take it out and the battery will stay locked in and if you want to remove the battery you can actually turn it and the pin goes in and that way you can then remove your battery and I'll go ahead and show how that works but you do need to have the key in it won't come out once the battery is turned on but that is the only way power will start to flow into the controller so that you actually get now there's probably the controller in here so it's all integrated and protected nice and neat and that's probably one of the reasons why they go with this frame design not only is it very solid but it also does keep a lot of protection so that you do get some the rainproofing on something like this you have as i mentioned earlier five pedal assist turn the bike on again if you look right here this is your pedal assist levels so one two three four and five now the throttle does get a affected by the level of pedal assist that you are at. If you have it on pedal assist one, when you throttle, you're only gonna have a top speed of about six or seven miles an hour. You do need to go up to five so that you get top. There are some bikes out there that actually have full throttle, but it's really a matter of preference on whether you like that or not. The other thing you need to know about that too is there is a automatic cruise control that turns on and that's a matter of preference too. Not all people like that. I personally do not really care for automatic con cruise control. I like to have the ability to turn that function off. If I want cruise control, I want to be able to turn it on. And that may be in the settings. I have not gone through it to figure that part out. I just realized that the cruise control is on there. So that does sometimes affect, you know, it's locked in and it won't actually go any faster. You do have your bell here that comes with it as well. And then of course your SIS Shimano, actually let's peel this off, index shifter here. And you know, it's really a basic shifter. A lot of bikes have this. Shifts very easily going through each of the gears. And that did work out pretty well. During the actual shipping itself, you know, it's a very common thing that happens, especially with this style of design. But the derailleur guard was bent in a little from the shipping, but that was so easily just fixed by just bending it right back out. I could do that by hand. You have your half twist throttle here. I'm gonna lean the bike so that the tire is off the ground just by twisting the throttle there. I do like the way that half thrust throttle is put together here. The only thing I have, I guess, one small problem with with this style of handlebar is that there's no space to put like my cell phone holder so i don't have that put on there and the bag thankfully does stick on here very well but there's not a lot of space for other accessories which is good that they have the rack now this is not a heavy duty rack obviously so you probably have a limit of about 30 pounds max and uh, it's just a beautiful design i love this patterning that's actually on this frame as well to me that really does catch it the eye. Let me go ahead and do a quick check or show you how this folds in folds for you there. So first of all, the pedals can be brought in, which is kind of an important feature when you're folding your bike because they do add a lot of width. So if you're putting it in, lying it down on a car, it will stand up. So I like that first. The other thing is it has a really easy latch. Whenever folding a bike, you always want to take out your key because these cables will pull when they change and you might end up bending it. So I took out the key first. Then I'm going to unlatch here very easy and now this bike is a little tight to bend or crack in half but you bend it here and I do have the battery still locked I don't want it falling out but from there then you want to put your pedal actually in a position where 
it won't hit the ground and then basically we can fold the bike and there is a stand at the bottom of here that keeps it from hitting your your chain ring and the bike can be folded kind of like this so you have the bike folded in here now at this point here you can also bring down the handlebars and fold that too in fact let me turn this around so that you can see how that works i'm going to turn it here and that way you can actually turn oh, take the handlebar down as well so this is the, the thickness of the bike that you see here from here to here so as long as your trunk is not wider or deeper you can actually stick in a bike probably even in a, a large mid-sized car trunk and with that there you can stick the key in here and it'll unlock and once you have it unlocked the battery will slide out I'm gonna go ahead and lock the battery once the battery is locked in again remove the key because you don't want to leave the key in when refolding the bike back up all right something else i really want to mention about the i guess design of this frame is that you also have a plug here that you can actually stick the charger in right where the battery is in the frame or on the bike so you don't actually have to remove the battery just to charge it and then of course when you're done charging this will help keep water out